I like. My name is Kenneth Parker, United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio. I first like to start by thanking our wonderful trial team in this case, United States versus Larry Householder and Borges. I'd also like to thank the Federal Bureau of Investigation for their work. As you know, uh, these individuals culled through millions, millions of documents, listened to countless number of recordings and so forth, and, and also spoke to many individuals to put this complex case together. Uh, numerous years of work, uh, more than four years of work, and today we witness justice for Ohioans. Uh, justice for Ohioans. It showed that if you're going to stand up and say that you're a public servant in this state, that you have to be a true public servant, not an imposter. All right, not an imposter. Uh, you, you have to make sure that you're transparent. You have to have the highest level of integrity. And you have to be sure that you come to work every day working for the people of this, of this uh, state. You know, we heard uh, Mr. Householder indicate that he keeps close his faith, his family, and his friends. I would have added one more. He needs to keep close the Ohioans if he is going to serve this state. That's what he left out. That's why he was here today. And that's why this judge uh, imposed the highest level of accountability under the statute. We are grateful for the, the uh, judge's decision. We respect that. We sought accountability every day as, as these individuals worked on this case. Like I said, more than four years, and we were looking for accountability. And today, we believe that Mr. Householder received just that. The judge made a statement that he would not credit any of his time as a public servant because he did not serve as a public servant. Well, now he has a different level of service that he has to give to the people of Ohio. We have indicated that it would be difficult for him to give good deeds, but that's not true. He can, he can continue to do so. But as far as this case, we believe accountability was served, and we are very grateful for this uh, court's decision. And I am grateful for the trial team to which we have. And, and I told you a long time ago, we will be relentless. Whether or not there's one document, or one million documents, or whatever, I am confident that the people in this office will call through will look for that information, will bring justice in, on their minds every day to work. And I know I have people behind me that work for the people of Ohio, the Southern District of Ohio especially, and I am grateful for them. Mr. Nolan, Mr. Parker, did we ever express any remorse? What does that say to you? As you saw in our sentencing memorandum, we didn't see any remorse from him. And it was apparent the judge didn't either. So. What's that? What message does this send to other public That you better serve as a public servant. If you come to work, you're going to be an imposter. You may find yourself being prosecuted by Mr. Singer, Ms. Gladfelton, and Ms. Ms. Payne. What does this say? Do you expect additional charges against uh, the First Energy, Energy Executives and uh, Sam Randazzo? We continue to look through evidence. We continue to listen to recordings and speak to individuals. Um, so we're going to go, if something's there, we're going to go there too and address matters. Any that, gratification that from this being the, act, getting the actual full maximum with this sentence? I'll tell you, I come to work every day grateful. So if it's a matter of me being grateful, if justice is served, then I'm very grateful. The statute said up to 240 months. And as you heard, the sentencing guidelines indicated life. So he received the accountability that was due. But I don't necessarily look at being grateful for uh, sentences. But I'm grateful that the Ohio ones get justice. What about him going to prison? You don't see that very often. Being a white collar crime, being remanded to by the marshal in the courtroom? Well, the U.S. attorneys prior to me, as well as myself, public corruption is our priority. We, as you know, with other cases, that we uh, are going to address those persons who are supposed to be public servants. Um, and if that accountability includes prison, it could be the day of their sentencing or sometime after, we'll leave that to the court. But that's just part of their story. 
What's your thought for SS going into tomorrow's uh, sentencing for Mr. Borges? Well, our thought process goes with our sentencing memorandum, what we asked for. Uh, and I'm confident that the uh, assistant U.S. attorneys will go in with that same accord, that vigilance that was shown today to uh, make sure that the judge hears all the factors that set forth under the statute 3553A, the A factors, and uh, make sure he receives his due. The judge says, said a lot about deterrence, that, that this could be a deterrent. Do you think that this will send a message to anybody else thinking that they might get away with something like this? Well, one person I hope it sends a message to is Mr. Householder. Uh, as far as other persons and the general deterrence, um, I would hope that individual would receive that message. Do you think that Householder's appeal will have any merit in another court? I'm confident that we'll be, we will be victorious on the field. Every, every case is unique, Mr. Parker. What do you, but in today's climate, the message clearly Judge Black talked about, as did your colleague, the damage to democracy. Talk about that briefly, if you don't mind, because there's a lot of concern that politicians may feel like they can do things and the lack of accountability is a very real right. possibility. Well, democracy is what we all stand for. And the tenets of democracy call for integrity, transparency, everything that you spoke to hold high and dear. And so if an individual believes that they can tread on that, they can step on democracy, then we'll address it. What yeah, so what's the timing? What's the timing for when you're gonna go with the next step in the case? Um, I really don't speak to timing. It's not we don't look at it in that regard. We look at our review of the evidence and what we should do at that particular time. How long do you think it's gonna take? review of the evidence? Uh, due time and ensure that justice and fairness occurs. Fairness has to be in place as well. Do you think Mr. Householder took his, um, uh, what the judge called the lies that he was using in the public uh, marketplace and took them into the courtroom in this case and, and decided to lie from the stand as well? Well, if you li listen to the court, he had, the, he had what I consider one of the best seats in the house. Mr. Householder, you know, every defendant has the right to take the stand and testify. That's their right. Um, if you observe the cross-examination of Mr. Householder, it was beautiful in the sense that it showed the implausibility of a lot of his statements and some of the falsehoods. And the court uh, heard all that. If you heard the court today, uh, he indicated what he had heard and he saw it was his statements that they were lies. And it was our statements to prove them to be non-factual. The judge's statements were really direct and, and very, some people might say, harsh. <laughs> I don't know, well, a number of his statements were based on facts and recordings, so those may have come out harsh, but he was talking about how Mr. Householder looked at other people and his view of going to war, right? Uh, those were his words. Again, as I stated, we're going to go wherever the evidence and recordings take us. Now, that takes us into a place where you hear harsh language is the harsh language of the defendant. And, and again, it goes to whether or not his statements today and his, view, his views on things are plausible. Should state house staffers, current lawmakers, and lobbyists who were part of Householder's crew, should they be nervous right now? No, nah, they ain't doing anything wrong. Let's take one more question, please. How about perjury? I mean, the fact that he testified and the perjury enhancement and Again, every every person you have the right to take the stand. Now, if you take that stand, and, and well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna raise your hand and uh, you know testify at your own peril. But if you're gonna take the stand and then mischaracterize uh, uh, where you were during a meeting in 2017 and your meeting with First Energy executives and things of that nature, remember the judge is gonna be right there listening to you. So and there was a number of other things that that were stated. Again, the judge is right there listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.